Hello everyone, this is Icona Kona, and it's been a while since I played some Battlefield 3 on the Xbox, but when I jumped on, there's a huge update that I found, custom servers. This is awesome, because I grew up in the PC age where custom servers was, you know, it was really cool, because you could have your own rules, because it's your own server. Uh, so it's a nice break from all the default stuff that EA provides. As you can see, I'm playing bolt action only on canal, something something canal, I don't know, I just call it the canal level. Uh, TDM, and I'm rocking the M40A5. Pretty good sniper rifle. Actually, I like this sniper rifle for bolt action only because it has really good iron sights. I really love the iron sights. Uh, for some reason, it's just I like having that certain shape of iron sight, you know, the, the ring around where you actually look through it. The, um, the rear sight is not too obstructive. It's a really good sight and it's a really good gun. And because I think this is hardcore mode, uh, it's basically a one-shot kill on anyone with this weapon. Now having custom servers and servers like this were bolt action only reminds me of the old days of first person shooters that were set in World War II times. There's a lot of World War II themed first person shooters. Uh, the one I liked and enjoyed the most is Medal of Honor Allied Assault and in that game because it was PC they actually made a mod specifically for bolt action only. I don't know if anyone remembers this or ever played it but Basically, you jump on the server and you were only allowed a bolt action rifle. That's it. You were not allowed to take out anything. Now, unfortunately, for Battlefield 3, you can't actually restrict weapons. I don't think you can restrict weapons on like Xbox servers or console servers or such. And so, you see a lot of people cheating in this match because it is a la it is labeled bolt action only. That's what the title of this server is, but people ignore it. They start using pistols like that and I'm like, "Oh, it says bolt action only. But yeah, this this reminds me of the good old days where aiming actually counts. Your your skill with a gun actually counts and you should you have to choose your shots wisely. Because because it is a bolt action rifle, you basically have one or two shots to kill the other person and your accuracy matters and your speed matters. Uh, with nowadays with like, Modern Warfare 3 and Battlefield 3, most of the weapons are automatic weapons. And so people just kind of spray and pray. At least there's this idea of suppression fire. But um, eh, I don't know. It gets a little old after a while because it's like, oh, well, he won because he had an automatic weapon. For me, bolt action rifles are just so much fun because you have to really choose your shots. And it's just so satisfying killing someone with that one shot. You know, you're like, you're really aiming for them. And you had one shot to take them out, and you did. It's such a satisfying feeling. By the way, here, because we're in hardcore mode, boom! Right through the enemy and right through my teammate. Uh, that's the bad part about these weapons. Because they kill in one shot, if your teammate accidentally walks in front of you or even behind the enemy, they're dead. <laughs> one shot kill. Oh, by the way, I'm trying to no scope here. By the way, does does this count as no scoping? You know, if I'm just like with a with, with actually no scope, where there's an iron sight, does that still count as no scoping, or is it still like it should be called no sighting or no sights or something when you hit, when you shoot from the hip? By the way, oh my gosh, could not kill this guy. I was trying to be all fancy with the hip shots, and <laughs> oh man, I, I think his teammate killed himself. So, or I don't know. Oh, anyway, I kind of wish that there was a little more options on customizing these servers like these really really fun servers there are servers that are like labeled pistols only and knives only I try to go on those servers and have fun but you always find those handful of people who like to ruin the game by breaking those rules because there isn't really a lockdown on loadouts uh, for consoles at least I, I don't know if there is for for PC where you can actually like edit the script files with the servers or something like that but oh knife but yeah, for consoles, it's probably very, very simple uh, configurations. Maybe like maps, map rotations, um, hardcore mode, or regular mode, the time, the tickets, that kind of thing. But I don't know if they have restrictions on weapons. I don't think so. But it would be really cool to see that because then you can have these custom games that really only PC players could enjoy. You know, I don't know about consoles, like how much customization you can have in console games, but. You know, I, I've played a few of them, and there's not too much you can do. Maybe you can change the map rotation. Um, maybe you can create your own game. I know in Black Ops, you can actually create some of your custom rules. But some of them are just... They're they still restricted, you know? Uh, if you're on PC, they can, like, hack the files on the server and literally make it into any game they want. They have, like, zombie mode. I know they have Infection or something like that on Modern Warfare 3 now. But they've had that for... PC games for a long time because you can go in there and actually modify the files. But now for for Xbox, I really hope that they 
introduce more customization because I really like these custom games. Now customizable servers also means that rules will be enforced. I am playing on a bolts only server, but it's only labeled bolts only. Like the name of the server is snipers and bolts only. And we have to really really leave it up to the players on the server to actually follow that rule. Not like this guy here who's clearly breaking the rule. I still take him out. Show him who's boss. But stuff like that, it, you know, you can't really control that stuff because the, the it's just not there for consoles. For PCs, you can probably, I don't know if you can actually go into the server files and modify them. But for consoles, really, this is just TDM hardcore mode. That's it. That is, that is literally it. And we have to take it upon faith that everyone tries to follow this rule of bolts only on this kind of server. Now the amount of customization that I personally want for these Battlefield 3 servers is asking kind of a lot because this is console and people who have played console and only console are probably not used to, to servers being so customizable or having servers in general. I know when I started playing Modern Warfare 3 or actually when I started playing Black Ops on Xbox when I first got my Xbox and oops! <laughs> oh, geez. Right in the back. Sorry, uh, I was just—I was looking. By the way, I was just looking far down, trying to kill the other guy, and I was completely oblivious to my teammate there. Shot him in the back. My bad. But yeah, when I first started playing Xbox and playing first-person shooters on a console, it was really difficult for me to try and get used to this idea of joining a random server or a random lobby. Like, I guess they call them lobbies. It was just really weird for me because I'm used to browsing through a list of servers finding something that I like to play and then just hopping on and joining it. Now that, that that's coming from playing years on PC, that's how it's been done on PC. And on consoles, especially with stuff like Modern Warfare, um, they just kinda scrap that. They, they just kinda like, okay, there's a quick join and that's all you get. But now with now what DICE has done is they've introduced uh, servers for consoles. This is kind of strange for a lot of console players on actually going through a server list, picking out a server that you want to join and joining it. Now, this does have a few advantages and a few disadvantages, but you know, I'm a little biased towards the PC way of doing things and I like that server browser. In fact, I usually use that server browser because I get to really pick where like what kind of games I like to play. For instance, if I'm a new pilot to Battlefield 3, I'm trying to learn to fly planes or fly helicopters, it's probably not a good idea for me to jump into like a 22 to 23 man server and try and get the helicopter. For one, I most likely won't be able to get it because there's someone there probably waiting in line for it. But also, there's too many people on the server, there's too many things to worry about and I'm, I'm just there to practice flying. And that's one of the great things about having a server browser is you can actually go through the server browser and pick specific ser oh by the way this is a weird glitch this is so weird uh, when I got re when I got uh, revived the HUD just stayed there so I have like the map and all that stuff there it's really distracting <laughs> weird glitch but yeah now I can actually go in pick a server that has a low amount of people very few people jump on I can easily get into airplanes and helicopters and practice and it's not really a, I don't really take those matches seriously because there's not a lot of people and I'm this. I'm just there to practice, and you, it's really hard to do that if there wasn't a server browser because it, it the matchmaking kind of automatically pairs you up or puts you in a server with a lot of people. They want you to join a server with a lot of people and you know get into action really quickly. But sometimes that's just not what I want to do. And these server browsers are really really cool to have that on a console. Another reason why I really like these custom servers is because it kind of makes a community in these servers. Now, console players who's always been joining random lobbies, um, I don't know if they'll quite get it, but for me, servers was like a place to hang, quote, hang out with the regulars. You know, when you join a server all the time because you really enjoy it, you start to recognize other people who do the same. Uh, I, I just call them regulars because they regularly join the server and you start to form like a community and it, I do this more with Team Fortress 2 because really that's the only way to play Team Fortress 2 is to join servers through a server list. But um, something like in Call of Duty or something where there is no server list, basically you're playing with either the friends that you know or you just kind of have to randomly, hopefully, 
uh, join a fun server and or fun lobby and find at least someone there. You know, it, it doesn't provide a central place for everyone to kind of gather and play together. But these custom servers do. And, you know, you can see a lot of these clans and communities start to pop up in Battlefield 3. And they make their own servers. People join them. You know, they have their clan tag and such. And it provides peop a place for people to just come together and hang out. And soon you start to recognize more and more people because you continuously go back to play on that same server. And so it forms kind of like a community. And that's one of the <laughs> that's one of the great things that I like about the the PC mindset of having a browserless and actual dedicated servers. Is you start to uh, build like communities uh, with these regulars. Oh yeah, nice shot, mid air or sort of mid air. Now, custom dedicated servers do come with their problems. And oh, by the way, here I'm actually, I think I spotted a sniper up there, so I tried to throw a grenade. I don't think a grenade can even reach up there. Also, look at that. All, all these guys floating to the ground, and I can't even hit one of them. <sighs> but yeah, custom servers. The problem with custom servers is you, you know, they are dedicated servers, and throughout the lifetime of a game, you have to maintain those servers. They do cost money. Uh, they, I guess, DICE is now allowing you to. Uh, rent these servers on like a either a day-to-day -day basis or a month-to-month -month basis or something it's it's kind of an interesting way of of renting out servers because sometimes people just can't afford for like a year uh, of, of a server so they just go like month by month or something or when they need to like host a tournament or something like that you can just rent a server which is kind of nice but you do have to maintain these servers and actually keep these servers up to keep the game alive otherwise the multiplayer aspect of this game is going to die so, I mean, that, that's one of the things that is good about, like, uh, the Call of Duty way of doing things, where the game is hosted on someone's Xbox or someone's PS3. It's some, um, it's some client. So, uh, that way, all you need is people who play and connect to the internet, and they'll act as servers. Basically, they'll host the game. So, it, I guess, I guess it's easier to, or it prolongs the life of the game. You don't have to maintain all of these servers, because sometimes these servers... They do, after a while, get empty. It's, after a while, it gets a little boring, and some of them, you know, you go to the popular ones, and then there's unpopular ones, and those unpopular ones, they're just, it's really difficult to get people on it. So, you know, that does pose a problem there. Now, the amount of customization that I'm used to, because I'm from a PC background, and I've been playing stuff like Counter-Strike, I do not expect DICE to do and to implement. I think it's a little too costly to do that kind of stuff, and it's giving the player a little bit too much power to customize the server in that much detail. By the way, I got team killed there. What the? I don't know. It's kind of weird. But yeah, that level of customization, I do not expect DICE to actually implement. It's giving the player a little bit too much power. It's it's probably a little too technical, especially for people on Xbox, because, you know, if... If you're on Xbox and you just want to stay on Xbox, it's going to be really difficult to edit like a file, a script file, in order to really customize a server. You're going to have to do that on the PC. And uh, maintaining it there, I, I don't know if people are willing to do that kind of stuff. So, the way it is right now, I, I, I like it. It's really different from stuff like Call of Duty where it's just throwing you in a random server. I prefer, I personally prefer going through a browser list and actually browsing through the servers, picking something that I actually like to play and not something that the system assumes that I want to play based on like very limited options. So those are some of my thoughts on the new custom servers in Battlefield 3. I personally really like them, I'm, but I'm used to that from PC. You know, I grew up on PC and that's just the way I've been playing for a very long time. So the fact that it's now on consoles it's awesome. I, I really like it. But what, I want to know what you guys think about these custom servers. And they have been out for a while. It's not anything new, actually. Uh, but I'm just curious on what other people think, especially people who only grew up with Xbox. Didn't really get to experience the... Oh, Team Kill! You gotta be kidding me! <laughs> but yeah, for people, especially for people who only really grew up on consoles... And, you know, seeing these, I guess, server browsers for the first time in FPS games. Uh, what do you guys think about this? Do you think this is something that's good or bad or, you know, what are your thoughts on it? I'm really curious. Now, before I go, I also want to talk about using bolt-action rifles because this is something that, boy, I love to do. Look at that. Look how satisfying that is. Killing someone who breaks the rules. Boom! One, for, one more for good luck. <laughs> but, um, uh, okay, I, oh, I thought I got team killed there. But yeah, uh, bolt-action rifles, 
I think can really, really help your accuracy. And I think it really shows how well you can actually choose your shots and how accurate you can be. Now, in close quarters, for some reason, the hitbox for or the 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 hitbox for these are just I don't know. It's really big close quarters. It's almost like a shotgun. Almost. I'm not gonna say it is a shotgun, but you can just run up to the person and almost point blank range. You don't have to scope it at all. Just shoot from the hip, and you'll probably kill them. And it's a one shot kill, so it's a pretty good deal. So this is actually a pretty good close quarters. I, I'm I'm using that lightly, lightly, but uh, it's actually a pretty good weapon at close quarters. If you want to try bolt action only, you can actually search for these servers. Just search for bolt, B-O-L-T, and it's usually the first hit or so. And when you join the servers, please try to follow the rules of only using bolt action only. Uh, you know, using automatic weapons ruins the fun for everyone. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching, and have a nice day.